Hello and welcome to the final lecture on permutations and combinations. In this lecture, we will continue looking at a few more examples of the application of the theory we have seen so far. So the first example states that A writes letters to four of her friends. four of her friends and addresses the corresponding envelopes. In how many ways can A place the letters in the envelopes so that all the letters are in the wrong envelope. You have four letters and four envelopes, and you want to compute the number of ways in which all four letters are placed in the wrong envelopes. So the total number of ways uh, can be computed by total number of arrangements minus the number of arrangements. in which exactly one letter is wrongly placed minus the number of arrangements in which exactly two letters are wrongly placed minus the number of arrangements in which exactly three letters are wrongly placed. Minus the number of arrangements in which yeah, so yeah, minus the number of arrangements in which all letters are correctly placed. So you want to exclude all other cases from your list of arrangements. So notice that there, there is no possibility of placing one letter with, in the wrong envelope and all three letters in the right envelope. Because if all the other letters are in the right envelopes, then this last letter has to go in the right envelope. So this is out straight away. So the number of, total number of arrangements is nothing but 4 factorial. You can place the 4 letters in the 4 envelopes in 4 factorial ways. Um, there are four factorial arrangements of these four distinct objects. So number of arrangements in which all letters are correctly placed is just one. So there is only one arrangement in which each letter goes in the right envelope. The number of arrangements in which exactly two letters are wrongly placed. So you choose, you choose two letters out of the four letters and you place them in the right envelopes and the remaining two letters have to go in the wrong envelopes. So there is only one way in which the remaining two letters can go in the wrong envelopes. So that gives you one way. And the number of arrangements in which exactly three letters are wrongly placed. So you choose one letter 
and place it in the right envelope and that can be done in four choose one ways and the remaining three letters have to go in the remaining three letters have to go have to all be in the wrong envelopes and that can be done in in exactly so if the three letters l1 l2 l3 and 1 2 3 then if all of them have to go in the wrong ones uh, then this has to this can go here this can go here this can go here or this can go here, this can go here, this can go here. So there's only two possible ways in which this can happen. So there are only two cases in which three letters, uh, three chosen letters are wrongly placed uh, in the wrong envelopes. So total number of ways is 24 minus uh, 4C2, which is 6, minus 8, minus 1. And this gives you nine different ways in which you can Ah, nine different bases that all letters are in the wrong envelope. And so that's the number we decide. So once again, uh, in this example, we've looked at an arrangement uh, where uh, we've counted the arrangement by considering uh, considering all allowed combinations and then subtracting uh, all the combinations that we don't need. So let's look at a second example. In this example, we have 20 distinct objects. Arranged in a circle. In how many ways? Can we select three objects so that no two are next to each other? So we have 20 distinct objects in a circle. And how many ways can we select three objects so that no two are next to each other? Where the total number of uh, ways of choosing these three objects uh, in such a manner is given by total number of ways of choosing three objects without the restriction we want to impose minus number of ways of choosing three consecutive objects minus the number of ways of choosing two consecutive objects one object apart from these objects. So total number of ways of choosing three objects from 20 objects, uh, irrespective of whether they're in a circle, is given by 20 choose 3. Since we just have to choose three objects from those 20 objects, it can be done in 20 choose 3 ways. The number of ways of choosing three consecutive objects in a circle is going to be uh, from 20 objects is going, just going to be 20 ways because there are only 20 distinct groups of three objects which are consecutive to each other. And so you subtract 20, uh, uh, which corresponds to the second term. And the last term is the number of ways of choosing two consecutive objects and one object apart. And so suppose you have these two objects in a circle uh, which are consecutive to each other. Uh, the number of ways of choosing that again is the number of ways of choosing that again is 20 because there are only 20, uh, 20 pairs of objects, uh, 20 distinct pairs of objects uh, which are consecutive to each other in, arranged in a circle. And once you've chosen these two objects, you want to choose the third object apart from these two objects. And so you cannot choose these uh, adjacent positions uh, since that's already been counted in the previous case. And so you have 16 remaining objects from which you can choose, uh, choose the third object and that gives you 16 ways. So this uh, 
this computation gives you the total number of ways in which you can have three objects uh, so that uh, we can select three objects arranged in a circle so that node two of them are next to each other. So let's look at a third example for this lecture. It asks you to find the number of integral solutions to the equation 2x plus y plus z equals 20, where x, y, and z are all non-negative. So you want to find the number of integral solutions to this equation. So based on our previous lectures, a uh, straightforward way of computing uh, the number of solutions is by using generating functions. And so the number of solutions is given by the coefficient of x power 20 in the expansion of x bar 0 plus x square, so on to x bar 20 times x bar 0 plus x bar 1, so on to x bar 20, the whole square. Where the first term, the exponents in the first term correspond to uh, correspond to the value of 2x uh, in this uh, in this equation, and the exponent of these two of the two similar terms listed uh, at the end correspond to the values of y and z uh, that are taken to satisfy this equality. And so you look at the coefficient of x bar 20 in this expansion, and that will give you the number of solutions. And notice that we've started at 0 since all of these uh, numbers are restricted to be non-negative. So this is one way in which you can uh, approach this problem. But it turns out for this, uh, for this case, the numbers are small enough, and uh, it's easy enough to compute the number of solutions uh, in a more uh, computationally efficient manner. And so suppose x takes the value alpha, where 0 less than or equal to alpha less than or equal to 10. So notice that alpha is restricted to 10 at most, because uh, 2 x can uh, 2 has to, has to be has to equal 2 x has to be at most uh, equal to 20. So alpha has to be at most 10. So if x is alpha, then y plus c has to be 20 minus 2 alpha. So for any alpha in 0 to 10, um, the number of solutions of y plus z equals 20 minus uh, 2 alpha can be for x is alpha. Uh, can be given by 20 minus 2 alpha plus 1. So these are exactly the solutions where y is 0, z is 20 minus 2 alpha, y is 1, z is 20 minus 2 alpha minus 1, and so on, till y is 20 minus 2 alpha and z is 0. So you have exactly this many number of solutions plus 1 for y and z. This implies the total number of solutions can just be obtained by summing over alpha. So alpha can take the value from 0 to 10. And for each of those alpha values, you have 20 minus 2 alpha plus 1. And so you can much more easily evaluate the sum over alpha. And that will give you the total number of integral solutions to this equation. And for this case, it turns out to be 121 uh, different number of solutions to uh, this equation subject to these non-negativity restrictions. So let's look at a final example for this uh, lecture series. And it says, it asks you to consider the dictionary ordering of all permutations of the word random. In what position does the word random occur if you consider the dictionary ordering of all permutations of this word itself? So, 
so this word random has six different letters. Um, so there are six factorial different permutations of the word random. And we've got to find the rank of the word random uh, lexicographically um, in such an ordering. Um, so notice that all of A, N, D, O, and M occur before R uh, in the alphabet. And so there are five factorial words which start with A. So all of them occur before, uh, before random, because once A is in the first position, the remaining ones can be arranged in five factorial ways. Similarly, there's five factorial ways for uh, words which start with n, five factorial ways for words which start with d, five factorial ways for words which start with o, and five factorial ways for words which start with m. So all of these words which start with the other letters in random except r occur before the word random in the dictionary ordering. So now we'll consider uh, words which start with r. And the, sec the first, the second uh, position uh, can be filled using A, N, D, O, or M. In a dictionary ordering, A comes first. So now we consider words which start with R, A. So in a dictionary ordering, D comes before uh, N, O, or M. So, so if the third letter is D, so if you have R, A, and D, uh, the remaining positions can be filled in three factorial ways, since n, o, and m can occur in three factorial ways. And if the third letter of the alphabet is now m, you again have three factorial ways of doing this, uh, of arranging the remaining three letters. So the next case is when the third letter is n. So that's the case we want to consider here. So the fourth letter has to be D because D occurs before O or M. And so that, that's in the right position for now. And the fifth letter, uh, starting with M, uh, will give you the word R-A-N-D-M-O, which is a word which occurs before random. And the next position has to be random in this array. So the total count of words uh, before and including random uh, in this ordering is 5 factorial times 5 plus 2 times 3 factorial plus 2. So random occurs in this position in a dictionary ordering of all possible combinations of the word random itself. And this turns out to be 614. So once again, we've seen an application of uh, the theory of permutations and combinations, where uh, in this case, we had to enumerate the different possibilities uh, so that we could uh, we could arrive at the desired uh, result. Uh, so that's it for this lecture. Uh, it has been a pleasure teaching this chapter on permutations and combinations. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Uh, stay tuned for more lectures in this uh, series. Thank you.